Hi, everyone. I'm Reagan Smith, General Counsel of the United States Copyright Office. I'm happy to be here today and happy to talk about why do you need to register your copyright. So should you register your copyright? Of course, the Copyright Office is going to tell you yes. Um, but I want to explain the basics and the benefits of copyright registration. I want to make sure you know what a copyright is, why would you register it, how do you register it, and how is this different from the other places where you may be registering um, your creations to help monetize um, your work. So first of all, what is even protected by copyright? Um, to qualify for registration, your work must be independently created by an author or author, so it must be yours and not copy. It also must possess sufficient creativity. Um, what does that mean? It means it must be original. That doesn't mean it needs to be good. Um, we're not going to judge your taste. And the Supreme Court in 1903 said that the government couldn't judge whether a work was art or good enough. There's really good reasons for that, including to ensure that we all have the same protections under the First Amendment, and also that copyright's core purpose is being realized. So the Constitution lets Congress make copyright um, protections to encourage the progress of creativity and the useful arts. We want to encourage people to create and are not going to decide um, based on matters of taste, what is protected and what is not. So what does it mean to be creative? It's a low bar, but there needs to be a modicum of creativity is the magic legal phrase. That means that ideas are not protected by copyright. If you have the idea to create a song about bringing it onto the dance floor, there's many, that's fine. We have a lot of room for a lot of different um, creative expressions of that. It also means that the basic building blocks of copyright cannot be locked up or registered by any one author. So what does this mean in the music creation context? Just as the Copyright Office will not register um, short phrases or generally titles for things, we won't register short um, musical notes, a musical scale an arpeggio, or single piano notes. Um, those um, titles and very short words may have um, notoriety and be registrable as a trademark, but for copyright protection to attach, there must be a little bit more to meet this creativity threshold. Um, finally, it must be fixed in a tangible form. The fixation requirement might sound a little bit odd, but it just means that you need to have a record of what it is that you have created. So you could write down um, your notes and your lyrics, or you could record it on your phone, and that would be the record of the work that you've created, which is protectable under copyright. Um, so a quick note as to musical works versus sound recordings. Um, many might know the difference of that, but I want to explain it for those who don't. Um, the Copyright Act provides these are different copyright interests. So um, one example could be Dolly Parton wrote the work, I Will Always Love You. She wrote the song, Whitney Houston recorded it. And that you have two different pieces of copyrights, which are separately protectable and which also have separate um, rules for licensing and can be separately registered with the Copyright Office. So what does it mean to uh, register your copyright with us and why do you need it? So copyright registration is not the same as registering with a performance rights organization, with a new mechanical licensing collective or MLC, or with sound exchange. If you are a songwriter or publisher um, for the musical work side, you might affiliate with a PRO like ASCAP or BMI or CSAC to license the public performances of their musical works. Relatedly, songwriters or publishers or administrators might affiliate with the MLC, which is a different piece of the musical work copyright called the mechanical right to get paid under the new um, blanket license. Sound exchange is on the sound recording side, and this is a government designated collective that handles royalties for certain digital public performances of sound recordings. You should register all those places if they apply to you and to what you create, but that does not um, mean that you should not also register with the Copyright Office. Each of those are independent registrations. So there are important legal and business reasons to register your work with the United States Copyright Office. The first legal reason is that for those works that are created in the United States, you need a registration certificate to enforce a letter of refusal to enforce your copyright in court. So registering gives you the ability to protect your intellectual property, and it's an important step in facilitating um, the economic value in the music that you have created. 
So if you register your work before infringement occurs, so before someone copies your work, or within three months before, uh, after first publishing your work, you can go to court and you can ask for a statutory damages. So the law makes a distinction between actual damages, so sort of proving whether there has been lost profits, and statutory damages, which under copyright law will allow a court to award um, between $750 to $30,000 as they consider just for infringements, or if an infringement has been willful, which is meaning intentional or reckless, and a court finds this is the case, they can award $50,000 per infringement. If you've registered your work, it's also easier to prove your legal case in court, and this might make it easier in terms of attorney's costs too. There's less for the court to figure out because they take, um, uh, they presume that the facts on the copyright registration certificate are true, and that can make it easier to prove your case in court. Registering your work also makes it easier for people to find you and engage in licensing arrangements because it creates a public record. Every copyright registration that we issue becomes part of our database, which lists authorship and ownership information. It's an interesting trove um, of information um, to find out um, a variety of information of American authorship. One thing to note is that registering your copyright is not required to issue a notice and takedown notice. So sometimes you might see a video that says, you know, or a notice online that says this video is no longer available during a, during, due to a copyright claim. That means it was taken down and may or may not have been registered with the Copyright Office. So a copyright registration includes three important pieces. First, there needs to be a completed application. Second, we do charge a filing fee. This is not refundable. And third, we require a deposit. So deposit is a, is a term in copyright law, and that means that we just need a copy of what you've created and what you're trying to register an interest in. So the fee and the deposit depend upon what type of application is being submitted. The sort of standard basic rule, if you are one author who's created one work, is that this costs $45. And in contrast, the cheapest version of a trademark registration is $250. I'm going to get into, we have a couple of different options for those if you want to register multiple copyrights at the same time, because we realize that can add up. But first, I want to explain um, what the deposit requirement is. So deposits can be either digital versions or they can be physical. And what we require depends upon how it was published. So under copyright law, the publication date is very important, and as well as the nation of publication, because it'll determine how long your copyright um, interest lasts and it is important to the record. So if something is first published in the United States in a physical format, you usually need to send that format in the version that is best in the best edition suitable for the Library of Congress's collection. When you send your work to the Copyright Office, because we are part of the library, the library may choose to add it to its collections and others can find it. But um, you don't need to worry about that until you get to our application because we will walk you through which version of the deposit is required. Um, how long does it take to register a copyright? On average, it's about two and a half months. If it's something that can be handled fully electronically and we don't need to, you know, open mail and go back and forth, that the average is 1.6 months. Um, so it's important also to try to fill out the application as accurately as possible because that will make it faster for our registration specialists to um, look at the claim and to register it. So I said I would say a little bit about multiple work registrations. This is an important to pay attention to because it can be very cost savings. So the first option I wanted to make people aware of is collective work. So collective work is a work um, that has been created by an author who is putting together um, uh, a number of contributions, which might constitute um, separate and independent works themselves, but can be assembled into a collective whole. So um, a good example, I think, for this group would be a sound recording album. Many albums are registered as collective works. And what that means is that both the authorship of putting the album tracks together, determining what's on it, adding the artwork, um, that is a type of authorship, as well as the underlying track protections themselves um, and the liner notes or artworks. And so long as they need to be owned by the same party and have not been previously published or previously registered, and each work must be sufficiently original themselves. 
Next, there is um, so-called group options. So this is something the office has created through its regulatory authority to allow um, people to register multiple copyrights for the price of one. And this is to encourage people to come forward and register their copyrights. We have a version for unpublished works, so works that have not been distributed um, in the market. And for every specific type of works, you can register up to 10 on one application and one filing fees, or 20 in the case of, say, you are a singer-songwriter and you own both the musical work and the sound recording of something you've created. Um, all works must be unpublished. They must be created by the same author or joint author, and they must be the same type of work. So you can't mix and max your graphic designs with your jewelry, with your album, you know, tracks. But as long as it is one type of those works, you can register under the unpublished works option. Another option which um, has been used a lot for music registration is the so-called unit of publication option. So this is for works that were packaged together in a physical manifestation um, and sold for the first time in this group. Um, it is not generally available to digital products. So I think I'm next excited to, to move on to the last group registration option that we've come up with, which is group registration for works on an album of music, which is available for both physical and digital products. This is something the copyright introduced last month, and it can be used to register up to 20 musical works that were published on the same album or up to 20 sound recordings that were published on the same album. You do not need to be the author of the whole album. You don't need to have the compilation authorship I mentioned under the collective works option. But if you were the writer on multiple tracks or you were a featured artist um, on multiple tracks, you can register these works, um, multiple works for the price of one. The requirements for this are generally that they must be first published on the same album. Um, they must have the same author or a common joint author. So if you work with different people, as long as you are um, the consistent through point, that would be sufficient for information to fill out on the form. And um, you must submit a deposit as with any um, application. So the fee for this type of um, option, which is called the group registration of albums of works on an album of music or gram is $65. And for many albums, um, this may save a significant amount of money compared to submitting multiple standard applications. Um, more details on eligibility and instructions for completing the GRAM application are on the office's website, um, as well as registration in general. So how do you register your copyrights? You go to copyright.gov, click on register your works, and go from there. One thing I will say is we're in the middle of um, a multi-year IT upgrade that is being run by the Library of Congress. So um, we realize that we, we hope it's going to a bit more forward thinking when that um, comes out in 2024. But meanwhile, we have a lot of information that we hope um, you will take and we are there to walk you through the process because we don't want copyright registration to be intimidating or confusing. We have FAQs and a variety of circulars or PDF handouts that address common questions. We also have YouTube videos that address key copyright principles of registration, as well as questions you might have about copyright in general. We have a lot that are about mute directed at musicians specifically, including um, explaining a little bit more the different pieces of copyright. And finally, we have a help desk of live people who will answer your questions and assist um, with anything you need. So. I think appreciating the value that copyright registration with the Copyright Office has um, to ensure that your creative works um, are noted and um, can be protected and enforced is a step of building your business. And I was happy to um, discuss the merits of copyright relation today. Thank you.